how we use the calendar component. We're starting with the Redwood base application and we're going to use the generic page template, the general overview page template for this page. We're going to provide a title and a subtitle and then we're going to pick up the calendar component which is one of the new components that is available as part of the Redwood offering. So let's go over to the component palette, we'll search for calendar and we'll just drag and drop it into the main area of our page template. So here you have the calendar. If you switch to live mode, you'll see that you can see a monthly view, a weekly view, a daily view, a list view. There's a lot of functionality built into the display over here. But the important thing is, if you want to learn how to use the component, you can look it up in the component exchange, pick up the calendar, know that you're choosing the OJSP calendar, this is the right component. And then you have step by step the things that you need to do in order to work with the component. And I'm going to show you how to do most of the things that are mentioned here, but not everything. All right, so the first thing that a calendar has is what we call the calendar provider. So in a calendar, we can have multiple calendars showing up. We can hide and show them dynamically. Um, we're going to define two calendars. One is going to be my personal calendar. And again, there's the display name and there's the provider key to separate things. And then you can choose a color. And let's add another calendar, which would be our team calendar. So again, we'll do a display name with an uppercase provider name with lowercase and choose a different color for this one. At runtime, you'll be able to choose which of those calendars to show or hide. Next thing, we're going to create a business object that will contain information about events. I'm going to pick up an Excel spreadsheet that has some events in it um, and load it to create this business object. Okay. So um, this is the calendar. And you can see we have a bunch of uh, attributes. Specifically, start and end are a little tricky because those are reserved words. So the columns in my table are actually start one and end one. This is uh, in order not to be reserved names. Next thing you need to do is you need to create the events. Now, the events have this structure uh, and those fields here. So what you want to do in your page is create a new custom data type. Okay, uh, we'll call it object, uh, we'll call it event, and we're going to add a bunch of fields in here. So the fields for an event are an ID, you have a start and you have an end. Okay, those are the start and end dates. Okay, next you're going to have the event title, and then you're going to have the calendar provider for a specific event. Again, each event can be part of a different calendar. And lastly, you have a Boolean property called all day, which indicates events that are spending the whole day. So now that we have this um, type, we're going to create a new variable to hold the events. This is going to be an ADP, so we're going to call it an events uh, ADP, and this is an array data provider of the type that we just defined now. So the event type and the key attribute is the ID. All right, so we have a variable. The next thing is to populate the variable. We'll add a VB enter event into our page. When we enter the page, we're going to create an action chain. And in this action chain, we're going to load the events from the table in the database. So to do that, we're going to start by calling the rest endpoint to get all the events. Okay, so going to our business object and picking up the get method. And then we're going to need to populate our ADP, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to do a for each loop running on the results from this REST call. And for each row, we're going to add it into our ADP data. And the way we'll do it is with a little JavaScript code here. Okay, so we'll go into the code view and I'm going to paste here one line of JavaScript that basically creates an object okay, called an event and sets the value for each one of the attributes. Now, the main reason I'm doing it is because I need the start to be mapped to start one, okay, and the end to be mapped to end one, etc. So I'm defining an object, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my page variables and find my ADP and the data array, and into this array, I'm going to push this new um, event. Okay, so this is all you need to do in order to assign 
the value that you fetched from the rest endpoint into our ADP, okay, with the right fields in the right place. We're going to do one more thing, which is before we start the assignment, we're going to make sure that the data array is empty. Okay, so this is again another little trick. If you want to set an array to be empty, just go in here and set an empty array using JavaScript, basically. And that's it. That's our load event method. Okay, and it loads the event into the calendar, but you can't see them right now. And that's because you need to uh, bind the calendar to the ADP. Okay, this is the data. And the other thing you need to do is you need to decide which calendars you're going to show from our calendar provider. So there's visible calendar. If you click on it, you'll see it's an array of strings. And basically what you do here is you specify each one of the calendars providers that you want to show. In our case, it's gonna be both the team and the personal. Again, at runtime, uh, the user is free to hide and show specific calendars. And there you go. We have the events on the calendar and we can see them, for example, here in a monthly view. All right, the next thing we want to do is we want to add the ability to create an event. So we'll turn it on in the calendar. This would add the plus sign over here. And we're also going to add an event detail uh, to be on. This allows us when we click on an event to see the details in a little drawer that pops up on the side. So for example, if we click here, you see the little drawer with the event details. Now you can populate this area with whatever data you want. I'm gonna show you how to do it, for example. I'm going to create a new fragment. Okay, I'm going to get, uh, call it uh, event info. And in this fragment, again, you can create whatever UI you want. I'm just going to very easily create a detail form on our event. Okay, so using the get one endpoint, I'm going to create a detail form. I can select which fields to show, in what order, um, and that would basically be what I'm going to show here. Now, I need to provide an idea of which event I want to show here. I'm going to create a fragment level variable, which would be the event ID. This is an input parameter into our uh, fragment, and it's a required parameter. And then I'm gonna map it into our calendar ID. All right, so now if I set a default value for this, for example, one, you would be able to see how it's gonna look like. And again, you can format it any way you want. For example, you can change the date format over here. Um, just use the converter, for example, to show any other date format that you're interested in over here. Like that, all right. So now that we have the fragment, the next thing is to bring it into our calendar component in our page. So if we go over here and scroll down, you can see uh, there's the event template slot and I can add in here, if I click the plus sign, I can find my fragment, the event info and bring it in here. The one thing that I'm missing right now is that I need to pass in information about which event to actually show. Okay, this should come into this variable over here, the event ID. So to do that, I'm gonna go back to my calendar and under the all properties, I can find what we call the selected calendar events. And again, if you look at the uh, little doc here, you would see this is an array of strings. This, uh, basically, this is an array of the selected events. So I'm going to create a new variable in my page called selected events. It's gonna be an array of type string. And this is bound to the selected event property. And then if I go to my fragment, all I need to do is map to this variable and select the first um, event in this array, okay? And now when I click on an event, I can see the details over here with the form that I designed. And if I click on the one-to-one, -one, I can see this information over here. All right, so this is how you handle the event detail area. Now let's go over to the plus sign. What we want to do here is we want to prompt the user to create an event. Um, for example, you can use a dialog to do that. So we'll pick up a dialog, add it to our page, and then design this dialog over here. So we'll make sure that it shows up right now, change the title over here, call it, for example, create event. And then we, um, we take this button over here and rename it to say save, for example. Um, to create a create form, very easy. If you're using business object or if you're using a REST service, 
just drag over this component. Make sure that the dialog has an ID. This is what we did right now. And then we're going to take the calendar, bring it over here and drop it as a create form. Again, you can control which fields to show and in what order and try and make it logical. So probably you want to have, for example, the start date show up before the end date, okay, something like that. And again, you can fine tune this, for example, the calendar provider can be a checkbox instead of um, the just free text. We don't need this save button, so we're going to remove it, but we're going to keep the actual event for this because what we're going to do is we're going to take the save button that we created over here and we're going to bind it to this existing action chain. Okay, so we're going to define on action for this event and we're going to create or use the create event action chain. Right. And um, if you want this to occupy the full space, just remove this little class and then the fields stretch out. All right. What's next? Um, the save button right now saves the information, but what we want to do after saving the information is we want to close the dialog. So we're going to use a call component method at the end here, point to our event dialog and invoke the close method. Okay. Similarly, we want to have something that opens the dialog, right? So um, let's hide this dialog for a second and we'll choose the calendar over here and in the calendar under events we're going to pick up the create event okay and in here we're simply going to call the component and invoke the open method on it and again this event is built into the calendar so you can do here whatever you want you can go to another page or something else in our case we just want to open this dialog okay um, actually there's one more thing we want to do here uh, after we close the dialog, okay, and we create an event, we want to call the action chain to reload the events. Okay, so we're going to call the action chain to load the events. And uh, this would refresh the dialog, the, the calendar with the new events that we created. Okay. One more thing, the variable for the calendar, when you create something, we need a default value for the all day. Okay, because it can't be null, so we're going to set it to false. So by default, it's not a full day event. All right, and that's basically it. That's our page right now. And we can um, do one more thing actually, which is once you fill out the start date, we know what the value for end date should be probably, right? So we're going to use an assign variable on the start date that would send the end date to be the same as the start date, which would make it easier for us to then pick the next hour, for example, or something like that, okay? Instead of having to re-select everything. All right, let's run our page. We have the events. We can click on an events, see the data on the side in this little dialog over here, okay? We can click the little plus sign, get our dialog to create a new event, a given name to the event or a title to the event, uh, select whether it's an older event or not, select a date and a time for the event. And once we select the start, we get the end date automatically populated and we can just adjust this one to be, for example, a little bit later, okay, two hours later and choose a calendar provider team, right? And now we have the new event over here. You can click on it and see the details. And that's the introduction to working with a calendar component.